Hey y'all, a while ago I made a video about why I am not the biggest fan of Dead by Daylight and it has gotten some comments and I just wanted to say that I am right and everyone who disagrees with me is stupid. Before I started making videos, I never knew how actually dumb YouTube comments actually were. You've probably heard other YouTubers talk about how dumb YouTube comments are, but holy shit, I've never realized how fucking stupid people are. So many people comment without actually watching the video, it is insane. I wanted to make this video for a few reasons. It has been almost a year since I made that original video, so I wanted to see how well it holds up today. And I also wanted to reword a couple things that I could have worded better as I feel I could have constructed my arguments a lot better. But mostly, I want to talk about how I am right about everything. But yes, I am right about the many, many issues this game has that people either dumb down, ignore, or sometimes even say, no, it is actually a good thing that it is dog shit. That being said, the main inspiration for me for actually making a follow-up video was one specific comment by a specific individual, and that was this comment left by Hens. If you don't know what Hens is talking about here, in my original video I complained that the settings reset every time I restart the game, and Hens is pointing out how this is because I messed with my INI file. Now Hens, I'm sorry, but you have fallen for my fucking trap. I am a master strategist, a master mind if you will. You see, I definitely planned for this, and I definitely didn't fuck up by noting down every complaint I had when I reinstalled the game only to make that video and just forgot that I set my settings for how to read only years ago because the game didn't have VSync and FPS options for literal years, so I had to change it myself. No, 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 no. I definitely planned to have an obvious mistake at the start of the video to make people think that I'm a fucking moron. I definitely didn't fuck up at all, 100%. Uh-huh, yep, yep, definitely. It was clearly and always a ruse to get people to point it out. And by the fact that you only pointed out the obvious mistake, that doesn't really matter. That means that you were unable to refute my other arguments, because I am so fucking smart. However, that stupid ramble wasn't entirely false. Hens, one of the greatest DVD players, commented on my video, and the only thing that they refuted was something that was actually a mistake that I will concede on being wrong. Although only half wrong because the reason I had to change my settings file in the first place was because the game didn't have VSync or FPS options for like 8 years. He didn't say anything about anything else. And that is because I am correct about the horrible issues plaguing this game. However, before I get into what I mean by I am right, I first need to say this. A lot of what I said in my original video were opinions. Opinions by someone who many would consider a new player. If you genuinely think like this, I'm sorry, you are just dumb. Even if a game has as many intricacies as a game like Dead by Daylight, 600 hours is not beginner. Even then, just like my last video, I have had multiple friends who have thousands and thousands of hours each help write this video, and together we have like at least 10,000 cumulative hours half of which being one person, you know who you are. So, if an opinion is invalid because of this number, but it's valid because of this number, then I would recommend taking a shower. It it's really easy. Shampoo even comes with instructions for people like you who don't know how to use it. But to my new player opinions, it doesn't mean that what I said has no value. Without getting too pretentious and going on a massive tangent about the human condition, I will briefly try to explain why opinions are important. <coughs> Our personal experiences, our subjectivity, and our opinions make us who we are. The world would suck if everyone was exactly the same and had the same opinions and lived life only by facts. Take food for example. Everyone needs food, but what food you eat is up to your preferences and your circumstances. Same with our opinions to make us who we are and our experiences. To deny opinions is to deny being human. Literally all art exists because of subjectivity, and to shut down opinions simply for being not facts is moronic. Yes, an opinion can be bad, but it doesn't make it invalid. In fact, I think wrong opinions are interesting, as I find it interesting to understand why someone would have said wrong opinion. Back to the food analogy, yes, a literal piece of dog shit is technically edible, but do you want to eat it? So I find it interesting why someone would suggest to me to eat a literal piece of dog shit, and that's kind of the point of this video. Um, where was I? Right, I was talking about a game I don't like. A uh, game? Bad. In all seriousness, I don't think I went about wording my original video that well. I said game bad a lot, when a better statement would be, I think this game is flawed in many ways that prevents me from enjoying it fully. Note how I did not say not fun, 
because a thing can be poorly designed but still be enjoyable. I mean, we all like bad things, whether it's a bad map, a bad movie, a bad game. There is something that is bad that we still enjoy, even if we do know deep down that it is bad. And for many people, that bad thing they enjoy is Dead by Daylight. A common sentiment I hear often when it comes to DBD is, this game makes me so irrationally angry, but they continue to play it. And I want to look at that. Why do so many people get upset at this game, but continue to play it? My thesis for this video is this. Dead by Daylight is a flawed game with many issues that people put up with because there's nothing else like it. To illustrate what I mean, let me give you an example of another game that is in a very, very similar situation to Dead by Daylight, and that is For Honor. For Honor and Dead by Daylight have so many similarities, it is kind of insane. Both games are very unique and hard to describe. It's hard to put a genre on it. It's easy to describe other games, like Left 4 Dead is a co-op zombie shooter, Don't Starve is a survival roguelike, Resident Evil is survival horror. So when you try to describe For Honor, it's kind of hard. Like, it's a weird sword fighter fighting game thing? Nothing else really plays like it, and you could call it whatever you want, but it's basically its own genre. Dead by Daylight is a co-op survival horror escape thing. You don't like really fight back, you can only run away. But you can also play as the slasher? Again, it's, it's hard to define as it is kind of its own thing. And that is both the best and the worst parts about these games. Both of these games may be in pretty good states now, but have a long, long history of controversial patches, removed content, overhauls to core gameplay systems, horrible balance updates, horribly designed characters that required massive overhauls that changed them to play like entirely different characters because their design just did not work with the core gameplay as they ignored major mechanics. Wait, you still do that? Both of these games have extensive character leveling systems with a prestige number that isn't actually a prestige as you don't lose your progress and it's just a count of how many times you've got that character to max level. Both games have a lot of customization options, as well as big legendary skins that change the character's entire model, sometimes into a licensed character. Although, I do need to say right here, For Honor's customization system is one of the best in gaming, right up there with Warframe. You can customize so much, not just colors, but even the material and patterns of your armor and clothing. Both games also added a character with a gun, which was hilarious both times. Also, in 2021, Dead by Daylight and For Honor had a crossover, which if you only played DVD was super forgettable because all that was added in DVD was the shitty charm, while For Honor had a fun limited time game mode where there was a super strong trapper bot that would attack both teams, along with a good set of some pretty cool cosmetics. But I swear to god that trapper bot was programmed to prioritize going after me, specifically. He would never leave me the fuck alone. I remember when the night was leaked and people thought that was going to be a polyon from For Honor, but... Nope. Guess not. But back to talking about the similarities between these two games. Importantly, both of these games have horribly, horribly toxic communities that have so many entitled players that are super annoying and so egotistical, they constantly demand 1v1s and they throw out slurs like it's candy on Halloween. We all have that one friend who has spent way too much time on one of these games, sometimes both, and we think about how these games used to be so much better back in the day, but those rose tinted glasses are more stained than tinted. These games are realistically the best they have ever been in their current state, but for us that have played them for years, we're just burnt out and don't want to play them anymore, and yearn for the old days when people didn't optimize it that well. The people still playing these games have been playing them for years and years and years, and have become so good that they just steamroll new players. Those new players see tons of locked characters that technically can be earned for free, but have a super long grind and are really essentially a seasonal fee for the core player base that has been there for years. The grind in these games isn't that bad if you just want one character, but to get all of them, it's gonna take, like, actually years worth of grinding. So, the game that they bought on sale for $5 to $10 is actually gonna cost them a lot more if they intend to actually play play it. And most importantly of all, both of these games have really cool and really unique core gameplay that is brought down by the players. Sweat Lords always make games less fun, especially when these games were intended to be more casual and the competitive side has always been seen as a joke, but the developers still change the game to be more sweaty because that's what the core player base that has spent thousands of hours are leaning towards because they have played it so much they want good opponents. For Honor always had an MMR, but the game got way less fun when people started playing only the meta and played in ways that made the game as least interactive as possible. And for Dead by Daylight, 
MMR is the worst change the game has ever made. MMR and the focus towards more competitive and fair games is the worst decision Dead by Daylight has ever made, and it just makes all the issues in the games even more glaring. So many issues with this game would be so much less impactful if it just took itself less seriously. I remember watching old Vanos videos back during the beta, and the game framed itself like a party game where you and some friends play out a horror slasher scenario the same way you play against your friends in something like Mario Party. But the game just had to get popular. The original launch version of this game was a disaster. Horrible balance, horrible optimization, horrible grind, everything. But if you didn't take it super seriously, and you didn't abuse infinites and perma-sabotage and other bullshit like that, there was fun to be had, especially with friends. The game was a fun, unique experience that was a fun game night event. That was until... This is what made Dead by Daylight what it is today. The first ever paid DLC character was one of horror's most iconic slashers, Michael Myers. Not only was it cool, but if you wanted to play this game optimally, this was a must-purchase DLC. You already know why Old Decisive, Object of Obsession, and Save the Best for Last, and Dying Light were horribly designed and needed changes, but this DLC was a perfect example of what was to be expected for the future of Dead by Daylight. The game would become filled with licensed characters that could only be unlocked by spending real money, and it came with overtuned pay-to-win perks that were required to play optimally. Even though the stuff released now isn't as strong as, say, original Medal of Man, the new licensed characters are releasing with powerful new abilities that are locked behind paywalls. In the current version of the game, Champion of Light and Chemical Trap are the only survivor perks that can hinder the killer, and both are locked behind a paywall. Finesse literally just lets you vault faster without exhaustion. Even though these perks are not as oppressive as the pay-to-win perks of old, they are still pay-to-win. The current Shrine of Secrets is not a good enough excuse to lock powerful abilities behind money like this. Like I said, Champion of Light and Chemical Trap are the only survivor perks that can hinder the killer. When I made my original video, Chemical Trap has never shown up in the shrine. Since then, over an entire year, it has only ever shown up once. If you want my take on how to rework the shrine, just let us pick a specific perk we want and then have us slowly unlock it either by dumping shards or playing games to earn XP or something to unlock said perk. At the very least, just remove the perks from characters that are unlocked by default. They're wasting about a third of the possible perks that could show up. But back to the sweat meta. With every new content drop, there's new power creep, and to keep up, you have to spend with your wallet. Now, it wasn't all a bad, because back then, the matchmaking system wasn't based on MMR, it used the emblem system. Now, <laughs> don't get me wrong, this system was flawed in its own ways, but it is still a way better system than the current system. Mostly because winning with the emblem system was not what is considered winning today. You just need to get enough points to rank up, and they can be earned in many ways, even if you die a survivor or get no kills as killer. Because you had more than one way to win, the meta was less sweaty. Now, don't get me wrong, it was still sweaty, but as ranking up was more based on monthly playtime rather than win rate, you still got a wide spread of skill at the top ranks. Now, some might say that this is still the same case today, where MMR has a very wide skill range of players, but let me explain why this is not exactly true. Your MMR, or matchmaking rating, is an invisible number that determines your skill bracket. You get matched up with people of a similar number, and the main problem with the system is that Dead by Daylight 1 is not a competitive game, and 2 hides this information. If there was a ranked mode and you could see your MMR and have a feeling of progression by ranking up, what I'm about to say would not be applicable. But because there is no ranked mode, and everyone is forced to play with MMR, and especially because MMR is meaningless and there's literally no incentive to rank up, MMR just does not work in a game like Dead by Daylight. Let me ask you this, what players are at top MMR? The answer is not the best players. It's the players that are playing to win, and that is the issue. At high MMR, you aren't matched up against players with a similar skill because that is impossible to calculate in a game like this. You're matched up against people doing everything they can to win, using the sweatiest perks and items, using map offerings, using comms, and just sweating their asses off trying as hard as they can to win. Notice how I did not say good players, just players trying to win. 
By doing well, you are forced to play against sweatier players, not better players. Theoretically, let's say every single player is of the exact same skill level. If everyone is the exact same skill level, then the difference between who wins and who loses comes down to what each player brings. This divides the player base where those that use the best and sweatiest options are at the top, and those who divert from the meta and use more fun perks that have a lower win rate, they are at the lower MMR. And this is the issue. You cannot quantify skill in Dead by Daylight with a number, and a win condition as binary as escapes and kills doesn't work when you can be a better player but still lose according to the game. At higher MMR, games aren't less fun because you're fighting better players, they're less fun because you are fighting sweatier players. Content creators will often say that MMR doesn't work or is unimpactful, but this is just wrong. To them it might not seem impactful, but the shift towards the sweat has made the game way, way less enjoyable for the average player. Do not blindly listen to content creators for this game, or any game for that matter. Scott Jund will say he has like a 90% win rate, even at top MMR, while not taking the game super seriously, and that's great for you Scott, but unfortunately for me, I have a job that is not playing Dead by Daylight. So yeah, I would hope that if it is your job to play this game, you'd be pretty good at it and are better at it than me. Someone who spends their entire time playing this game might think the MMR system doesn't work, and the grind isn't that horrible, and that is because they've played this game so much, they forget what it was like starting out and having to suffer through the grind and learning the game and getting good at it, as they have spent so much more time post-grind and post-being good at the game because it's your job and you have 10,000 hours. As someone who has wasted their life on a different video game with a very long grind, I can say that I feel the grind isn't that bad, but when I think about it more and more, or even just try to help my friends who haven't gone through it yet, no, the grind is very long and very annoying. Games like this that have really long grinds for a thing make it seem like it wasn't that long after you've already done it, but in the moment it is super tedious and super annoying. Think of it like this. You are a new player and you're playing Killer. You play Wraith because he's pretty good for new players and you're enjoying him. Then you get enough shards to buy a new Killer and are trying to find one that interests you. Do you A. Buy the Killer that actually interests you, or B, buy Artist, because all of her perks are currently meta and the best slowdown in the game, and as you play more and face better opponents, you will need good slowdown to keep up, as Killer has no good universal slowdown perks. The correct answer is to buy Artist, not to play her, but literally only for her perks. You have to buy this Killer, then spend around a million blood points to even get her perks on the Killer you actually want to play, then invest either 2 million more into artists to get them to level 3 for all killers, or just spend more on your main killer to get them leveled up. People that say this game doesn't have a grind are just stupid and forgetful, because no, it does have a horrible grind. You just forgot about it because everyone that plays this game has thousands and thousands of hours, and they forgot about the first thousand where they had nothing. Every issue this game gets gets worse the more the game focuses on trying to be a competitive game. The horrible map balance means the outcome of a game can be determined by just what map you're randomly given, and because map offerings exist, Sweatlord stacks can just always go to the most survivor-sided maps. When a game gets more sweaty, the meta becomes worse and worse, and that is very easily seen in Dead by Daylight, as every match has the same 15 or so currently meta perks. Let me remind you that, as of writing this video at least, there are 276 perks, but only the around 20 get seen, and that's on both sides. Another horrible balance point is the killer balance. I could load into a map as Survivor, and my opponent can range from no add-on Trapper to a max speed add-on Blight. A new player that wants to play Myers because they like the character that doesn't have access to all the meta slowdown perks is supposed to be comparable to Dracula running four slowdown perks. If you haven't caught on yet, every issue with this game that could be somewhat ignored just gets exacerbated by the more competitive shift in the game's design and balance. Now, the reason I am making this video now is because of a certain limited time mode that I genuinely believe could be the thing that could save the game, and that is 2v8s. The last time I played the game was the first 2v8 event, and let me tell you, it was the most fun I ever had playing this game. The chaos, the novelty, it was also perfect and made the game fun again, mostly because of one thing. Because of how horrible the matchmaking was, there was basically no MMR and, like, no sweating because people were just playing for fun. Granted, there was the occasional killer that hard tunneled, but it wasn't consistent like it is a high MMR in the normal game. People played this mode for fun and didn't focus on winning because who cares? It's a goofy, unbalanced mode that is full of bullshit on both sides, and that's the point. While the normal game is pushing for a more competitive angle, 2v8 comes out and is back to being unserious, which is what most people, myself included, liked about the game originally. I actually 
unironically, genuinely enjoyed playing the game even as Survivor. The game somehow managed to actually become fun again. Dude, she died in a pilot. Hold on, wait. If we look around, I'll fix it. Do it. Do it. All right, it's back. <laughs> oh, good, 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 I got hooked by the slinger, and then the hunter threw the hatchet at me, but I was still hooked. And then... <laughs> okay, I have been skill issued. Brutal. Fuck, there's a killer. I can't fix the pallet, because he's chasing me. It's okay, 110, loser. What are you gonna do? I can loop here for like a minute. What are you gonna do? There's no pilot here. There's no pilot here. What are you gonna do, loser? This is so. I'm holding the. Yeah, go away. Why? What the fuck? This is. Why is it here? I've never seen it here. I'm so sorry for my attention. I'm gonna go to God. Bye. <laughs> See ya, man. You got that. That's all you. Oh, six done. Did you break that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's the trapper. That is the trapper from the Medela. <laughs> the Chris Field. Hello, Alan Wake. Hey, Leon. Alan Wake. Uh, there's a wraith. Yep, that's not good. Yeah, there's a wraith. <laughs> <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> I love this fucking mud man. So glad it's back. Oh, this is so big. Oh, there's a trapper too. Oh fuck. <laughs> the trapper. Oh, Alan Wake. I'm here. I'm Alan Wake. Hello, Alan. Go, Alan. I disarmed the trap in here. <laughs> oh yes, you're a hero, Alan. There was Wake. two traps actually in here. Go, Alan. Alan. Oh, he wants Alan. Fuck. Don't. He's, he's still here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Trapper. I just armed this trap, a loser. At the start of the game, what are you gonna do about it? Oh, he's gonna rearm it, fuck! It's okay, I got to a, a different pallet. If there's a trap over here, I'm gonna be upset. Wow, look at this, look at this Rather fucking game we're playing. Effects, we have, oh my god, everyone is fucking here. There was Ada Wong, Saga Anderson, Alan Wake, Cheryl, Steve. This is Fortnite. This is literally... We're just playing Fortnite. Lenton <laughs> Smith. I'm on Wake does challenge Wake. I think correct. I stubbed my toe on a trap, Saga. <laughs> I need you to heal me. I, I, I wrote... Stubbing a trap. Stubbing your toe on a bear trap, yeah. I, I wrote that you're really good at this game, so I need you to carry me. Wait, you... You, you can also lift? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no! Fuck. <laughs> Well, I tried not like. I don't know why I committed to lifting up that pallet. <laughs> yeah, that was a very interesting play. What's Silent Ooh. Mode? Rush do? I think it's just quick play. Once more, quick the ocean's awake! I'll show this fucker the Herald of Darkness. <laughs> I stand an ever ending! Nice miss. I stand an ever ending night! Oh. No, I didn't. Like Oh, he wants me. Maybe he thinks Alan Wake was the one who was Ooh. in there. <laughs> Once more, the Alan's a lake. Is it? Oh. What is bro doing? What is bro? Shoot you? Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, I agree. Oh, Alan just shot. <laughs> I think I don't. I don't think he hits us. All right. Oh. He's an idiot. <laughs> the the spirit, spirit's that. also right here too. Yeah, he he absolutely hit that. I don't know why he didn't. He, uh, it's because he's bad. Is, is, is why. Oh. oh, I'm the champion of light, baby! I'm Alan Wake. <laughs> You're next. I'm Alan Wake. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go uh, remake Shark Pallet. Uh, he's here right now. I know, I don't care. That's fair. <laughs> 
She's not in Shack currently. Why is so she still running in that Shack, bro? Nah, I'm not gonna question that. That's a chance no longer progressing. Okay. Okay, oh my god, I'm like, go. I'm like, go. Fuck it. It's okay, we're, it's worth. Getting a hit oh, is worth than put Shack to sh get Shack piled back up. Oh, hey, James. Hello, oh, Alan. Alright, time to get a flashlight. I am Island Wake. That's not a good sign. Uh oh. Blight Nurse. Soma. Oh, Blight Nurse? Oh, Ooh. Blight Nurse. Ooh. Oh, fuck. Ooh. I need a flashlight. Oh, I need a flashlight. I need a flashlight. I need a flashlight. Flash flash fuck. That's not good. Uh, Ooh. both PC. Whoa! Oh. Get out of the fucking way, Neo! Wait. The ancient tech. What is the ancient tech? Running back. No, 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 you fucking shit. No, 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 no. <laughs> they're both what? there! They're both there! They're both there! Oh, they, they, they didn't get you. Wow. Uh, it's a fucking leper. Get out of the locker! Get out of the- I saw you! Get, no, I, they're here! They're here! Get out of that fucking here. locker! Get out of- here! Are you here. Mother- No, you- No, I'm not letting you do that. No, kill- Kill- Blight- Where- Where the- Okay, the blight left me. Where is the- The blight left me. Alright. You gotta leave them here. I think the nurse is coming though. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, the end blight suit. Fuck! I'm revealed! Nope. I forgot! What did you say? Have, have, you, have you seen the Xenomorph Queen? In Dead by Daylight? Have you seen- Have you seen the one image on Dead Dog Saloon? I hate you. <laughs> Hi, one of the James Sunderlands. Uh, I'm walking because I don't want to use my Spiffers. Both. Oh, uh, both of the James Sunderlands. <laughs> oh, hey, Ash. Hey, Alan Wake. How is your uh, deadite hunting been? How is your wife finding been? <laughs> That's true. Hey, That's I true. hey, I actually got married to my wife. Okay, you went to kill yours before you became married. Oh fuck! <laughs> so two v eight proves, at least to me, that the shift towards competitiveness is ruining the game. I am not saying that comp players are the spawn of the devil and need to die or anything dumb like that. But what I am saying is that competitiveness should not be the default. I shouldn't be punished for winning by going up against sweatier players. There's literally no incentive to win, so if you do win, you just get paired up with people that dedicate their entire life to winning. And it's just not fun. As a quote unquote new player, this just de-incentivizes me from playing the game. Being punished for doing well is not a good way to keep players invested, especially if they are not playing the party game like a competitive game. If there's a separate ranked queue, you know, to have problems like splitting the player base, but it would be better than what we have, and there would at least be a reason to sweat. The real fix is to just remove MMR and go back to something similar to the emblem system. Or just be like me, and only ever play 2v8 and just uninstall the game when the mode goes away. I should say, my fix for the game isn't just to delete the normal game and play only 2v8, but to learn from what makes 2v8 fun, and that is the fact that not sweating is fun. There's basically no MMR because of how long the queues are for killer, so there's like no reason to sweat, and the majority of games are way more fun because the game is more chaotic and random instead of just predictable sweat fests. With better balancing and better matchmaking, DBD could actually become good. So that is the main thing I want you to take away from this video. Dead by Daylight focusing on competitiveness and sweating is making the game less fun, but because there are no other games like it, if you want to play a game like it, you're just stuck playing the sweat fest that is current Dead by Daylight. Now, the rest of this video is going to be me going over my last video and just clarifying some things. So the first argument is the new player argument. This is so dumb and I don't think I need to go over why. Yes, Dead by Daylight is a complicated game and it takes a long time to understand what the killers can do, what perks to look out for, but this is not something that takes thousands of hours. What actually takes thousands of hours is to become a god at looping, but as someone who doesn't enjoy survivor gameplay outside of playing it with my friends, being a decent looper is fine enough and I'd rather spend my time on a game I actually enjoy rather than a game I don't enjoy to hopefully eventually be good enough to enjoy it. Even then, being good at looping doesn't even work against half the killers because game design is hard. Next is the settings being reset on launch argument, and this is the only thing I will concede that I got wrong, like I said earlier, but it's only half my fault. Before I started recording this original old video, I did not have this issue because the settings that the game was resetting to were the settings I wanted to have them reset to as I changed it in my INI settings. 
I had to edit this file because the game for like eight years, I need to reiterate this, eight years did not have basic FPS or VSync options innately. So when I finally made that video that I've been wanting to for years, I ran into this issue because I forgot about the INI file and I said it was a problem with the game when in reality I caused it myself. But again, I only caused it myself because the game lacked basic features for my entire time of playing it, so I'm only gonna half concede on this argument. The next argument is the pay to win grind, which hopefully I have already explained why I believe this to be true. The starter perks for Survivor are decent, but almost all the killer perks are just complete dog shit, and a lot of the best perks are locked behind licensed characters, including perks with entirely unique effects. Could you imagine if all exhaustion perks were locked behind licensed characters? Now it's not as bad as that, but the core of you have to buy the DLC characters to keep up is still prevalent. I then say, they always find a way to fuck it up in relation to prestiging and leveling up. Back then when I made this video, they recently added the auto leveling system, but for some reason you need to have a character at prestige 1 to have access to auto level, and they said they were going to add this feature in 5-6 to six months. It has been at least five to six months, and the feature is in the game, but like with many things I said in this video, why does it take behavior months and months to add things that should be really, really easy changes, especially when it comes to balance? So many killers have useless add-ons, and they say that they will touch up their add-ons in like four months when all they do is simple number changes. You have the PTP for a reason. Changing numbers is something that takes literal seconds, so when you have an idea for a perk or add-on buff that is simply just a number change, use your PTP to have it tested. Next, I mentioned the overpriced cosmetics, FOMO, and lack of prestige skins, and this is all still true. I will never forgive Fortnite for normalizing the $20 skin, especially in non-free-to-play games. Next, I go over the matchmaking, and I think I've already said why I believe MMR is the worst part about this game enough times. Although, again, I just want to show you this screenshot. This was so fucking funny when it happened to me years and years ago. Then I mentioned how survivor teammates are always, always useless, and how the more basic the cosmetics, the worse they are. And uh, after the release of that video, they have since added Sable Ward. Next I mentioned how survivors should be able to see their teammates' perks, and yeah, this still isn't in the game. Give it like two more years and maybe there'll be a PTB for it that is missing basic features. I then say that bringing back Hawkins was bad because now it is possible to get Hawkins. Moving on. This part I will just let play out because it is correct. In the theoretical perfect survivor game, you hold mouse 1 for 90 seconds 5 times. Sorry, that's not right. They added a toggle option, so now what you do is you press mouse 1 and then tab out for 90 seconds, and then repeat that 5 times. The main objective is you sit there and do nothing. Skill checks are the only thing preventing the objective from being objectively terrible game design, as there's technically something there, you're technically doing something, but skill checks are so easy and are only ever hard if the killer's bringing something like impossible skill check dunk. I can react fast enough to tap back into the game to hit a skill check. Now, some people commented and said that I am part of the problem when it comes to bad survivor teammates because I said tab out during gens, but one, in the footage shown I didn't because it was hyperbole, and two, did you forget when I said I literally only play survivor with friends? My next point is why I don't like the good part of survivor, that being looping, and this is the most opinionated thing in this video. I personally don't like survivor gameplay because it feels like you're just following a flowchart. The only real fun moments as Survivor are when you're against a killer that you have to actually dodge a skill shot, like Wesker or Deathling or Blight, Huntress. Killers that have a power that is more interesting than put down thing and loop and now you have to leave loop. However, most killers are not this interactive, especially the new ones. Also, yes, half of Survivor gameplay is sitting doing nothing because if you aren't being chased, you're either on a gen or on a hook, which are both basically non-interactive gameplay. Next, I transition from Survivor to Killer, and I think I could have worded my killer complaints way better. But a way to get across the point I was trying to make, once again, goes back to the shift towards competitiveness, making the game less fun. Killer is reactionary, not proactive, and the only way you progress the game is if, if a survivor makes a mistake, or if you're playing a killer that is so strong the survivor has little to no counterplay. A lot of the time, if a survivor is playing well, the optimal play is to just ignore them and go back to patrolling gens, which is not what comes to mind for an unstoppable slasher, which I just think isn't that fun. Also, I just want to mention in the footage from my original video, the first survivor instantly gives up, I assume because of RPD. 
This is a good time to mention how much of a baby everyone who plays this game is. Survivors are so entitled, so pathetic, they DC if the killer downs them. Almost every game has at least one DC, and it is so pathetic how these crybabies whine when you just play the game. It's like they wanted to load into a match where the killer ignored them so they could go AFK on gens. Isn't the point of Survivor to interact with the killer? Why does everyone DC when they interact with the killer? I then go over how horrible the balance is, but I've already gone over that in this video. I do once again want to mention the Billy Blight and Nemesis add-on story. This is outdated now, as all these killers have had their add-ons reworked since this video, but I still think the story is interesting, and the story goes like this. Nemesis had only one good add-on, that being Marvin's Blood. Because it was Nemesis's only good add-on, everyone used it, so it had a much higher pick rate compared to his other add-ons. Because it had a much higher pick rate than every other add-on, the devs nerfed it. The devs were going to do the same thing to Billy's engraving add-ons because they had a higher pick rate, and this was because they were fun, not because they were very good. But because behavior only looks at stats, they thought it was a good idea to nerf the add-ons that make your chainsaw charge slower. Now, Blight had no add-on changes for years, and that is because all of his add-ons were fucking insanely good. His yellows are better than some killer's purples, and because all of his add-ons were used frequently, his comically overpowered add-ons were not changed for years. Compound 33 and Alkering were never nerfed for years and years, but they decided to nerf the fun Billy add-ons and Nemesis's only good add-on. Next, I mention how I cannot balance add-ons around rarities, as you have access to basically infinite of all of them. Things like brand new parts are not rare, and if you run out of them, then you can just play a different survivor that has some, or if you somehow manage to actually run out of them, then you can just play a killer and dump all your points into survivor to literally never play without a brand new part. You can even, like, AFK as killer and go eat a sandwich to get some points to have access to overpower shit every game. And even then, this is just another mechanic that punishes only new players. Then I go over bugs, and this game is one of the most janky games I have ever played. Every update breaks something, something is always kill switched, and like I said in the video, the binding of Kinshapper was infamous for costing money. And now the Houndmaster PTB is also full of jank, and it's probably not gonna be that much better when it launches. And again, to quote that video, every update introduces some insane new bug to something completely unrelated to the changes. The most recent example of this is somehow Huntress's hatchets are thrown at a different angle now, despite Huntress not being changed at all. Did you know this game is made with basically block coding? The spaghetti code is so tangled, I'm surprised they can keep adding more to this dish without having the bull explode in their face. Well, it's gotten close a few times. The Binding of Kin chapter was infamous for costing money. This was the worst the game has ever been in terms of bugs, but every other update Pinhead gets broken, the audio never works as intended, at least one thing is always kill switched because of some game breaking bug. This is unacceptable. Every major patch, something gets broken. Remember when they broke female vaults not too long ago? Remember getting killers stuck on your head and they just don't get to play the game anymore? Stupid, insane game-breaking bugs like Infinite Mending Legion, Invisible Wesker, Chainsaw Myers, Freddy getting stunned by Dream Pallets, Release Blight POV, Horrible Frame Drops, Out of Bound Glitches, and so, so many others that just makes the game unplayable. I'm surprised it got as far as it did, with it being so horrible at launch. Next, I say that this game is only popular because of the licenses. This is true. Everyone I've ever talked to about this game has said that the only reason they ever got into it was because it had a character from media they liked. And the only reason the game has lived as long as it has, and is as popular as it is, is because they got Michael Myers in the game four months after launch. I then compared Dead by Daylight to Fortnite and the fact that people play just for the characters from other IPs, but I will give Dead by Daylight some credit here. DVD actually does Fortniteification well, as the characters are not just skins. Well, usually. DBD actually adapts the source material and makes a unique power for the killer, and unique perks for killer and survivor. Just, like, look at Alan Wake in Fortnite. The skin sucks. Now, Alan Wake in Dead by Daylight, that is an amazing adaptation. Alan Wake might just be a skin, but he has so, so many voice lines, and even though two of his perks are dog shit, Champion of Light makes you actually feel like Alan Wake, as you are actually using a flashlight as a weapon. Call of Duty having a Saw skin is fucking stupid, but Saw and Dead by Daylight actually fits, and the pig has a unique power and isn't just a skin for Trapper or something dumb like that. Speaking of Call of Duty crossovers, do you guys remember those awful Fallout skins that just looked like a mod? Oh, Jesus Christ, that franchise is so fucked these days. Then I mentioned how they appeal to the horny players with the characters and skins. After the release of that video, again, they have since added Sable Ward, and her first skin was 
you know. Also, again, I am going to complain that they cut the NSFW content from Hooked on You. The entire point of the game was that, and as someone who wants the adult game with a budget to become a real thing, I was very, very disappointed. Like, you don't have to go all in. Baldur's Gate 3 is a perfect example of how far to go if you don't want to get too freaky. But, uh, please go full freaky, thanks. Then, my final point of the video is talking about how incompetent the devs are. This is pretty obvious. It takes them years to add basic features. New content is always super buggy, the balance is horrible, every new map is horribly designed, and a lot of the newer killer powers are just very uninspired. I have even mentioned things like Old Legion and Skull Merchant in this video, which you do not need me to reiterate on how horrible those designs were, and how baffling it was they thought it was okay to not only release, but charge money for. And like I said, they're gonna fuck it up somewhere. Every update has something that is broken, either a missing feature, a horrible bug, a horrible point of balance. The devs are just super slow at doing anything. But like I said earlier, even though this game has all these horrible, horrible flaws, people still play it. People are still invested in it. Hell, I have still been invested in it, even though in that year since making that video, my hour account has only gone up by this much, which was only from playing the 2v8 events. I have been invested in this game because deep down, I want it to get better. Even if it doesn't, I'm still gonna come back when they add another character from media I like, including a certain individual that is coming next summer. Even though this entire video has been shit-talking the game, I still enjoy it from time to time. I will bully my friends when I see them play it, but at the same time, Wesker is so fucking awesome to play. The only hope I truly have for the future of this game is that the devs learn from 2v8 and stop focusing on making the game an eSport. Because if you have watched anything from the comp scene, you have to put on so many rules and restrictions to make the game somewhat fair and entertaining. So trying to balance the game around it is just an unwinnable uphill battle. I do want this game to get better. Obviously, I would prefer thing good over thing bad. But I made this video because I am tired of everyone ignoring the horrible issues plaguing this game. If you like this video, then do the YouTube things, boost this video in the algorithm so more people can see it. I want to hear what people have to say, and I mean an actual genuine discussion and not brainlet saying mad cause bad in response to someone not blindly loving this game and spending all my time and money on it. So if you want this game to improve, spread the word about what needs to change. Yeah. 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 Yeah.